Morning guys, how you all doing? All good, I hope. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm out at Galton on Sea. Why? Because I uh, put about six destinations into a random picker last night. And that's what it came up with for putting Yarmouth North, Yarmouth South, uh, Galston Beach, Galston Pier, Hopton and Caister. And it picked out twice. Best out of three. Galston Beach, so we're here. So if we blank today, I can blame it on that. <laughs> it is now 25 past four. <clears throat> it's low water today at half seven. So the time I get down there and set up and that, should give me a couple of hours left of the ebb. And then it's high tide at half past one this afternoon. So I'll be fishing it on the flood all day long. It is uh, it's Wednesday the 29th of May, although you wouldn't think it with this weather we've been having. It's atrocious. You'd think it was March still. Uh, yesterday it was so cold, windy and rainy. But it's supposed to be dry today, all the way up until about 2 o'clock-ish, fingers crossed. Um, so hopefully it will stay dry. But anyway, without further ado, let's get down there. Let's chuck a few rods out, hope for a bite, hope we get a fish, fish or two for the channel. Um, we had fish on the last two ses sessions, but uh, I think with the weather just starting to warm up and that, that weed at, at the minute is building everywhere, uh, a little bit of may rot, definitely a lot of floating weed, so it's hopefully not too bad down here, and, and the good thing about uh, being picking down here, if the wind is a bit nigh, it's supposed to be a moderate um, from the west, but we'll, we'll see when we get down there. But if not, I've always got the river to go to. But I don't really want to do that. So without further ado, let's get down there. And I'll see you on the beach. condensing my gear last night going through and being really sort of brutal with myself saying don't take, make, take too much gear just take basically what you need so this is what I've got I've lightened the load by a fair few kilo and basically this is my box I've got the rig rigs in here and basically yeah I really stripped it down in here I've just got a load of hook lengths four um, circle rigs uh, not circle rigs Pulley rigs, very hook lengths on it. Got T bar, packet here with all my baiting tools, disgorgers, knives, and all the rest of it in there. In there, literally got 40 pound snood, 25 pound floor max snoods, six leads, a little compartment there for loads of clips, swivels, up and over clips, and the rest of it. Some shock leader, a knife, some baiting elastic, and a finger stool. And they're just from the shades and that's it basically really condense it down save so much weight in here i've got my my bait i'll show you that in a second and everything else is in my backpack that's all the gopro stuff spare hat my flasks bottle bottle of uh, frozen juice outside flask of hot coffee outside and that's it really okay big rod set up ready to go i'll show you that now I've got Blue Ocean Rod, Shakespeare, Salt XT, or Salt of the Surf, and a 7,000, 60 pound ASIO shop leader, 20 pound Shakespeare Salt Line, all the way down, pulley rig, 70 pound ASIO rig body, rig clip, 40 pound snood, 3 0 Cox of all circle, 
Big bit of crab, mussel and squid on there. Six ounce lead. I have got an imp, but I'm just using the, the clip on the lead. It's a lot easier. And I'm gonna get that cast out just off the edge of that groin. Not gonna, not gonna go too far with this one. Give it sort of like 15, 20 minutes there. If not, I'll cast it a bit further out. Okay, I'm just setting up the other rod, long cast. I'll show you that in a minute. I'll show you all the bait I've got today with me. I've got a tub with some mussels, whole shell on prawns, raw king prawns. Got some squid in that one. In there is just a few little crab wraps ready to go. Crab and squid wraps in there. Got loads of uh, squid in this one. In here, we've got tons of uh, <clears throat> frozen, salted, and bled lugworm. Got a load of mackerel strips cut up, some more mackerel in there, and some herring, whole, whole herring fillets. I've got two or three little uh, peelers left. Uh, I've got two left, I'll just put one on. They need using today. And I've got two packets of lug, which uh, are still all right. They're just getting past their best. I've got another packet as well, a big, bigger pack. But if I don't use them today, I should bleed them and salt them. Right, let's get the hooks baited.
Okay, both rods are out. We'll just see what the tyre's doing out there. That's held quite nicely. It's a bit to the left, but this one, oh, I think I just need to move down further to the left because that seal freaking stinks. So keep getting a waft of it. Oh. Well, how are you all doing anyway? We had a good bank holiday. I had a busy one. I had four days off. I had the Sunday off work. Bank holiday Monday, obviously. And I've got Tuesday, Wednesday for this week's days off. So, three sessions in four days ain't bad. Yesterday, with the weather being lousy, wind and rain and all the rest of it, I just spent all day sort of sorting the tackle out, refining it. Uploading stuff on the computer and putting a little film together. So I'll probably putting all three together, trimming them, overstrand, and this one. They're like nice little bank holiday weekend session. But hopefully we stay dry today. If anybody else has been out, how you got on? Caught anything decent? What's the weed situation like? Obviously I'm talking about around in Norfolk, but if anyone's further afield, leave a comment as well. As I say, um, we put six destinations in, in the random Wheel of Fortune. Span it. Caught through the best of three, and this Gulfstream Beach came out twice, so... Alright. Here it is. So if we plant, I'm blaming it on that. So. Well, it's about five ten past five. See, it's low tide at half past seven this morning. So it's got plenty of time. And then it'll be flooding back all day long. But I've noticed, I picked here, I didn't want to go too far to the left because the, uh, the beach gets a bit lower there. The wooden fence gets a lot higher. And uh, I can see all that fence is all wet from, it, from where I am now to the left of me here and all the way around that's all soaked and wet and all the sand as well so I assume that high tide it's literally we can come up to this if not a little bit beyond but not too far beyond it doesn't look like it's lashed over there I mean that bit's just a bit more dry on the fence to my left so is that me or is that a little shake? no that's a little bite and we've got a bite I'm going to get this bloody microphone out of the way Might be something on, I'm not sure. It isn't small. Just keeping an eye on this big rod. I think what I'll do, I'll give it another 10 15 minutes on there. Just while it's low tide, you never know, there might be a chance of a bat or something but as it starts to flood I'll pull that out and then uh, give it a big one. Bite as well, definitely a whiting. Let's get it back in. Bait looks alright.
Second cast, a nice big white in. We're off the mark on the Log Worldman Squid. I knew they were the bites. A nice fat one and all. Let's get this unhooked. Nice fish. Woo we're on a roll. He had a good sort out of the, uh, this rucksack yesterday. It's the best thing I've bought for a long time. I was a bit nipped and I should have picked them up really. I might go back today. There was two left in, uh, in Aldi. Now I've got it for 19 99 and I went in the other day, there was two left I think. Half price, 50% off, tenner. Probably gone by now. I might have a look later on, I thought I'll just buy them and then I can sell them. I think that's just crabs. But, um, you see the little box of tackle I've got, that's, that's not the problem. It's when you start adding your, your camera gear, your tripods, your, your GoPro stuff, your bottles of juice, your bottles of uh, your flask, your bait. That's where the weight comes from, the tackle weighs nothing. But I'll still keep tweaking it and getting it right down. Bring that right hand rod in in a second. Tide's a bit sort of slack at the net. It's six o'clock. I just bought the big bait in just to have a look, see what it's like. It's only been out, but it's getting ragged by crabs. So what I thought I'd do is I'll get a new bait on here and get this cast out as far as I can because with it being low tide, I think the crabs are gonna be in close. So hopefully we'll try and get beyond the crabs. But I've just cast this one out again. I was having a bite, I was just leaving it, and all of a sudden a bloody pigeon. <laughs> Flew into my line, wrapped itself round its leg, yanked the rod off the thing, I grabbed it, managed to free the bird, but missed the bite. Now I'm going to get this uh, 
be baited, another wrap on there and get it cast out. Yeah, we've got this lash back on, another bait, ready to go, nice big bait. It's just started to rain, wasn't forecast. Hang on, sorry about that. Just had a nice big slam down. Soft sand. Definitely a bass. Hold down, slam down. I right, pulled out of that one. It's getting, I'm getting the bites further out, but it's like soft sand. Two or three really good head shakes like a bass. And it's that, it's that one uh, hook, the one above the lead that's doing all the business. Getting all the bites on that one. So I'll get this cast straight back out. I'm gonna get the big bait in first, that's ready to go. And then rebait this and get it cast out again. But it's just starting to pull right to left now. Well, that's a big one cast out. I'm not going to tighten up to it. I'm just going to let it swing round in the tide. Get a little bit of bow in the line. I've got to cast as far as I could. So, there's always a chance of a ray or something here. Smooth down. Just going to wind that clutch off. Right, let's get this other one back out again. I might just go for all lug on this one, I think. Because the bottom one, the mackerel all the time, is getting stripped. Stripped all the time. It's 
have to be a bit careful what my lines are doing now. I might have to put this mod on the left. The further you go out, the stronger the tide is. Okay. I'll put the salted lugs on. The rod took slammed over. I felt it. Then I let go and I just dropped the rod straight away. Left it. Let it come back. It slammed over again. And a really big fat wire really chunky. That's definitely key for that one. What a result. Salt with lug and squid. So we're having that one for tea. I know one thing guys, I should be letting the random wheel of fortune do its job next time. <laughs> it seems to know better than I do. Right, just baited that back up again. A little bit of fresh lug and a great big piece of uh, salted lug. I've got some massive salted lugs here. Great big fat donkeys. Got another two or three packets in there. It's really tough. It stays on. And it rehydrates once it's in the water. It goes soft again. Okay, rebaited that, cast that back out where I originally caught those first two white in. And you can see the rod pod shaking. To the left seems to be better, I don't know why. Another nice fat white in. Again, the one above the lead. That's the one that's doing all the damage. So I'll get this unhooked and get it back. That's whitey number three. Not bad at all. Just hoping for a slam down on the big rod now. I'm gonna bring that in in a minute and just check the bait because there seems to be a lot of crabs as you know, you get that horrible backwards and forwards pulling on the line. Again, middle snood, the one above the lead, that's doing all the damage. Another nice fat decent whiting on a low worm tip for a bit of squid. All right, let's get this unhooked and we'll get it back. Well, we're having a good day in a minute. So if it's something a bit, bit bigger, nice bass or ray or smooth amber will do. But I'm not complaining, three fish. Not been here now. Well, it's old. Right, let's get this in the hook. There he is. Right, I'm going to bring this in. I'm going to bring my big bait in. Check that. And we'll get that cast out again. And away. It's about 8 o'clock, it's got a little bit quiet, now we're at low water. So I just brought the uh, left rod in again, I thought I'd have a little bit of a play about. On the bottom snood, got a whole shell on prawn with a little bit of squid, that's nice and tightly bound on. It's got the hook point proud. And the top two snoods, I've got a fresh lug. 
and I've got some salted lug and some squid, just tip with little bits of squid on both snoods. The salted lug's a lot tougher, it's lasting a lot longer, or well, it, it did in, in previous sessions, so we'll see if it works and we'll get it cast out. Okay, the uh, rods are out, it's about eight o'clock, five past eight. The phone's working again. After I dropped it in the sea, it's been a bit temperamental, as you would be. <laughs> it's been fine for the last two or three days, and all of a sudden it's just, just this weird, keeps turning itself on, off, on, off, on, off. But I think it's because of the back. And in my haste, obviously I powered it off and then ripped the back off to get the battery out. It's on a clip system. And obviously the uh, power button and the volume button they're just not properly aligned or it keeps pressing itself in and it's on and off so there's no back on it at the minute so if it starts raining I'll have to put it away in my pocket but yeah I'll have to get another phone because this one's uh, about shot I think keep this one just for a camera only my I can, I can still press the pins with my hand, I was quite surprised. These little buttons, but a uh, bit ma masking tape job on the back, I think. <laughs> Waterproof it. The tide's all weird at the minute, it's got a bit of a sloppy sea on at the minute. Try to get the rods up as high as I can to get out of these surface breakers. I think it's just on to start to turn in a bit. I can still steer the funnels and keep an eye on the funnels so when they start disappearing I know it's on the flood. It's not as windy as I was expecting so that's a, that's a plus and it's warm as well. And now I need a coffee. That rod out, salted lug, and fresh lug, took the squid. The rod tip absolutely hoofed over, pulled into it, had it on for a second, but it dropped it. I put the rod straight down, let the line go slack, give it another 30 seconds, and it hoofed over again twice. I wound into it. Look at this one, boys. Look at that full whiting. Probably one of the biggest whiting I've had. Nice big fat fish. That's a definite keeper, that one. Really chunky. 35 centimetres, that one. Way over the limit. Salted lug and fresh lug tipped with a bit of squid. What an absolute beauty. Well, that one's coming home with me. That's fish and chips tonight. Sorted. I'll get that unhooked. Okay guys, I cast that out. <clears throat> that was on the salted lug and squid. Or salted lug and fresh lug and squid. Look at that for an absolute beast. It's 35 centimetres that one. Really fat and chunky. Look at that for a whiting. Look at a donkey. Well, right, we'll get this one unhooked. And that's coming home for tea tonight. That's whiting and chips tonight for me. Woohoo! We're having a session. Let's get it back. Well, back in the bag. <laughs> That's dinner tonight. It's half eight, guys. It's on the flood now. We're just starting to lose the funnels. Don't know if you can make them out in the distance there. We're just starting to disappear under the water. And notice the uh, tide is definitely coming in by a meter or so. They're on the flood, starting to swing left to right. We're still getting the bites. Sorted lug and squid's working well. Point you at the rods, hopefully get a bite on camera. That'd be, that'd be a miracle, wouldn't it?
sounds bright. Come on, come back. Okay, it's just got about nine o'clock. <clears throat> just bought the big bait in. I'm going to swap it over and go for an old favourite. It's got a nice bit of herring, fresh herring, a nice bit of squid, three oats cocked from all circle, bound onto the dongle. Just going to clip that into the imp. We'll get this cast out. Leave that to settle for 30 seconds to a minute, and I'll wind down to it. Just let put bow in the line, put a bit of a belly in the line, and then we'll cut them down. You, wanna, you still want to pull the excess in, you don't want any line laying on the surface, it'll drag it. But we're on the flood now, and uh, going left to right. So I'm going to have to try and uptide it a bit. The only downside is uh, travelling like this. I haven't got my other, my, uh, my barrow wheels with the rod pod on it so I can't separate the rods. We'll have to make do for today. It's getting out warm now. I'm going to take a jumper off of it. Hi guys, how you doing? Back on the flood. Just refresh the baits, cast them back out again. A little bit of tangle with this one. He's taken two, two ups. He has as well. Whiting. Whiting number five, not as big as the other one. We'll get them back anyway. They're still there, they're coming through in packs, so I'll quickly bait it out and get it out again. Woohoo! Having a right session today. Just hope for a different species would be nice. We're happy though. Guys, we're back out. Having a right session today. Well, the sun's so hot now. I wouldn't expect it to be this warm. I'm not complaining. It's a bit of a top tip to what I've found today. Those last three fish, you get fast rattly bites, fast rattly bites. Rod slams down, lift it up, nothing. Just put it straight back down, drop it straight back to the bottom, leave it. That's the last two fish, that's the third time lucky, second time, same, rattle, 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 slam down. Pick it up, wind in, lock it. Drop it straight back down again, third time lucky in all those last two fish. They'll take it, the one end is there. Just drop it down, give it a couple of minutes, lock it, bring it back in. Look at this. 
could be anywhere, all right, today. Well, say you could be anywhere. It's not exactly Marbella, is it? Not the door door you know, Bit of dust still nothing. <laughs> We've got the sun, we've got the warm, we've got the fish. Banging day. But I would say, it's not the wheel of fortune, it's the skill. <laughs> Still leave the skill of the hand. That was just fate. Still relying on skill. Big slice of luck. I want to catch a fish from, from a bite, really it is, on camera and one take. Sticking with uh, what's been working is lugworm or salted lug and squid. I'm actually using a combination of both. One fresh lug and one salted lug, take a bit of squid on each one. And on the bottom one I put mackerel back. Because mackerel seems to be getting the bite. All I've got from the prawn was crabs. Not literally. Well, a difference of weather making it and a few fish to you to you he zizz your morale just hope for a nice doggy or smooth hand would be nice What I'm going to do in a minute, I'm going to bring the, uh, bring the big, rod, big rod in. I've got herring and squid on there, but I'm thinking we will change the hook length, change the snood, go with a 3 and a 2 and I'm going to put a great big whole bit of squid on there. I think the herring's a little bit more selective for the rays, maybe a dogfish, but I'm just going to put a whole bit of squid on there. I'm going to turn this off now, I'm going to get a fish. Been winding as far as that for now. I'm gonna give it 30 seconds. Let it pull round a bit. It's starting to come round now. See the line moving to the left. Go to the right, from left to right. See it coming round, it's coming round. Put a bit of a bow in the line and it's still coming. So you let that lead sink in. Still coming around, 
straight in up in front of me. That's it, that's enough for what I want. Just get the lines, we're on braid, so. I'm still coming around, it's ever so slightly going to the right. It's got a nice belly line in it. Now it should pull tight. Perfect. Right. Got a couple of hours left of fishing. Let's have a couple more, eh? Let's be greedy today. Yeah, I reckon it's about half eleven. I just brought the big rod in. So the mackerel's all, uh, or the herring, sorry. It's all been chewed up by crab, so I'm just going to put a great big bit of squid on, a whole bit of squid, mount it on. That's just clipped into the end. Refresh that bait, got it straight back out again. I'm not going to go as far with this one. Just a gentle knob. this rod. Quarter 12. I'll give it another hour and a half to see how things go. I think I need to be a little bit more on it because when you get a bite, it's literally a minute or two, or well, within a minute, as soon as you cast it. I normally turn my back and go and sit down. Woo, that sun is warm. But at the minute, the only little vibrations and trembles are like a little white. And Maybe a pouting. Right, I need a cold drink. Okay guys, it's coming up to 10 o'clock. Just refreshed the baits, cast out again further to the left. Rod took sand over again, it's getting stuck in a sandbank. So what I'm gonna do is, Soz Law, I stripped out my bait box yesterday and I thought, no, I'm not gonna need the pyramid leads, or straight leads. I just use the grip, uh, bring the grippers. But I wish I got the straight leads now because it's landing in soft silt, soft sand out there. So I'm not going to put the clip, uh, the clips on on the weight this time. I'm just going to let it sink as it normally is. But I've got another white in. I'll show you that. Another decent white in. Not quite as big as the other one, but still nice big fat fish anyway. I'm going to get this back. Ties well on the flood now, but they're all well fat. All well fed. Well, 
Things are, what a day. Five fish. I've lost about two, three big ones as well. All right, let's get this baited up. Cash straight back out. What a day. I'm going to move back as well. I can't see. <laughs> I'm blinded. All right, guys, just cast out, aimed it in. A couple of minutes. Rod tip slammed over again. I wanted a new species or another species, and I've got it. A lovely another place again. I don't know where the place are coming from all of a sudden. But it's about the same size as one we got the other day, about 35 centimetres. So I'll just show you that. Look at that one, guys. Another beauty. Middle snood. Salted lugworm and squid again, doing the business. Always the one above the lead. Oh, we'll get this fella back. Six fish, five white in a nice big place. Yeah, probably would be a keeper, but we'll slip him back. And off he goes. What a session. What a session. The random wheel of fortune comes up trumps again. All right, I'm going to quickly get baited and get back out again. What a session today. So that's quarter past 11. I'm going to bring this one in and just check the bait, I think. Not had a bite for a while. I think I'll probably put the prawn back on the bottom. Pour in a bit of squid. Can't see a bloody thing. Okay guys, it's just gone one o'clock. The last half an hour. I've had a change of baits, so I stripped all the lugworm off, to get nothing at the minute. So I've just gone mackerel and squid on all three hooks. The two up and the one down. Nice big bit of mackerel and squid on each one. I've just recast that bait out. We've got half an hour to catch something decent. But the, the lugworms aren't working at the minute, so we need to change things up. Weather's in and out. It's twisting and turning like a twisty turny thing today. One minute I've got my jacket on, then I've got my jumper on, and then I've got stripped off my t-shirt, and it's t-shirt and it's raining. It's like April day. Alright guys, that quick change of plan to mackerel seems to work. Little dogfish. There's four species today, white and dab, place and dogfish. And I've got a bite on the big rod on the dongle. And I need to watch that. A couple of times it's bent, it's rattled and bent down, but it hasn't gone yet. Right, let's get this little fella back. What a day. Mackerel is the way forward. Okay, we're back out. We're having a good session today. The wheel of fortune it is, the way forward. I'm going to bring this one in now because it's bowing to the left, or to the right. I don't want it to go if it trips out. I'm further out than what it is to that groin, and then it's going to go round the groin, and I lose a lot.
going to put this one well to the left on the other rod pod. that's going to hold or not. Pretty lovely nice fishing vessels and boats out today. We can go back and forth all day long. Sailing boats, fishing boats, a few chart boats, a couple of working oil rig boats. Seems to get to a point. It's all right with this one, Cassie's sort of like 70, 80 yards, it's fine. You can cast it a little bit further with the big bait. It really does pull round a bit. I just had a big slam down on the uh, big rod. Got pulled over, I started dragging lines, it's nice, so it's nice and loose. I had the fish on, all the way in close to there. And it just went dead weight. I'm just dragging somebody else's uh, rig. So yeah, locked up. Fish is gone. There's someone else's pulley rig here. Literally about 10 yards out. Absolutely gutted. I reckon it was a nice smooth hand. Big bit of uh, squid stuffed with uh, shell on prawn. Bit of shell on prawn that's on the top. I've got it straight back, straight back out. I walk there a bit left, give it a bit of tide on, and I give it the real big one as far as I can. Ah, well, I've got somebody else's rig. Shock leader, pulley rig, pulley beam a lot. A bit of a weird system though. So that shock lead is tied directly onto the uh, pulley. I'll give it about another hour, see what happens. Just want one decent fish. Dogfish, smooth out. Bass, something like that. Fingers crossed. Alright guys, I'm all done and back at the car. God, I'm absolutely sweating. It's 22 degrees now. Packed up at half one. Just in time, it absolutely started lashing down. But as soon as it stopped lashing down, the sun came out and it's been the hottest it's been all day. Whew. Tell you one thing I've got to stop doing, or stop doing now, is taking my suit. It's just too hot. I've got a old army pair of uh, Gore-Tex waterproofs that just pack away inside a hood bag. I need to start bringing them because as soon as you put, I didn't have my jacket on today, but as soon as you put the bib and braces on, even if they're undone and unzipped, you just can't breathe in it. This is so hot. Whew. What a fantastic day. What a really good day. Could have been better. I lost three good fish. A nice smooth hound. Saw it swirling in the thing, but snagged somebody else's rig and two really good slam downs, which are connected to. But must have got snagged or because I was casting out fairly far, sort of like 80, 90 yards, into soft mud. Them grippers just hold. Um, I could have done without just a straight lead, five or six ounce straight lead because I was holding no problem as long as you uptided it, give it plenty of slack, let it take care, take a hold, but yeah, still a fantastic day, really good day, really enjoyed it. About six white in, a dab, a place, and a little dogfish. So, can't complain with that. Great three days out over the bank holiday. And uh, so I hope you enjoy the video. Any comments, leave them below. I'll get back to you, do the best that I can. If you liked the video, press like and subscribe. Tight lines, and I'll see you again in another one. Cheerio, guys.